Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to my official guide video for Dragon Speed 10. I would like to call this the official guide video for all dragons, but unfortunately I don't have any experience besides Dragon Speed 10. I basically refilled all the way, all the way up to, like just, you know, through all the floors, all the way up to Dragon Speed 10. I've never farmed any of the other dragon floors before. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my team. And um, not just my team, because I already talked about my team before, but I'm going to talk a little bit about my team, as well as some alternative teams. But um, in my opinion, I think my team is already near perfection. Al almost close to perfect um, for the New King strategy for Dragon's B10. I know there are certain players out there who are able to clear Dragon's B10 using healers and stuff, but it, uh, one, it takes very, very long. Two, um, I don't have the monsters to do that, nor do I have any experience in that regard. So I'm only going to be talking about the nuking strategy for Dragon Speed 10. And this is what you're familiar with if you've watched any of my runs for Dragon Speed 10. So first of all, my units are, are as follows. Um, the Dark Nike, or Dark Victoria, Evil 3, they're all Evil 3. Um, Light Medusa, Dark Gatito, and Dark Thor. So my Dark Victoria is a... Nuker slash um, CC monster slash uh, variant skill provider. Basically, she has an attack offensive base leader skill with attack. Now she's not the perfect uh, perfect nuker. Her her attack stat is obviously a little bit low, but she does have that very very nice attack leader skill to boost my team's damage just that little bit higher. So this is my Light Medusa. She is, uh, she's also got 100% stun as well as Elemental Edge for nuking. So she's a CC monster slash nuker, just like my Dark Victoria. And yeah, she's built on like 100% um, you know, full damage, um, crit rate, attack, crit damage. My my Victoria has one slot defense to kind of tank a little bit of damage. I'll go to I'll explain a little bit why about why I gemmed my monsters this certain way. Um, and my Dark Gatito has just crit rate double attack. I had to put him on broken set. Uh, oh wait this one's crit damage. I forgot. Um, I had to put him on broken set mainly because I cannot get him to a hundred percent crit rate on a on a regular set. On either Valor or Ruin or Intuition. I had to put him on a broken set in order to um, achieve a hundred percent crit rate. You'll notice, notice that I have a near hundred percent. This is just one percent away, um, over a hundred percent. And you'll notice my Dark Thor also has a hundred percent crit rate as well. And he is on one slot defense um, as as well. He has Courageous Strike. Although Courageous Strike doesn't do too much damage to the dragon, it does do a little bit, slightly more damage. And he is the highest attack based, um, or he has the highest attack out of all the. 100% defense down um, on first skill monsters. So, so out of all the monsters that have 100% defense down on his first skill, he has the highest base attack, and he's also dark, and he has 100% base crit damage because he's dark. And um, being dark is actually pretty important because the Dragon Speed 10 boss is light, so you get more damage if you are using a dark unit against him. Okay, so this is just um, the introduction of my team and their their skills as well as their, their gem builds. Now you might have noticed one similarity between all of my monsters, actually two similarities. One is that they're all nukers, they all do a lot of damage, they're all here to provide damage. And two is that their utility skill all have a 100% chance to activate. So 100% um, stun, 100% stun, 100% armor break. Now why do, you, why do I need 100%? It's mainly because if I fail to land any sort of debuff or anything on any of the runs, um, it's basically one extra refill right there. So I'm just going to go through, if, you're, if you've never watched me run Dragon's B10, this is the first time you're wa watching me run Dragon's B10, I'm going to explain um, my, my basic strategy of going through Dragon's B10. Now this is pretty, this is pretty simple, it's just, uh, it's just mostly nuking. But I did mix a bit of utility and CC in there. And here is why. Now, um, let me just explain the monsters on Dragon's B10. What's going to happen is, on the first floor, you're going to have a Light Persephone in the middle. And on the side, there are three units. It will either be the Light Colt, the Light Kilobat, or the Light um, Bee Thingy. I forgot what the Bee Thingy is called, but you, you've seen them in Star Sanctuary. It's the Bee Thingy. 
So, um, the most threatening monster is obviously the Colt. The Colt is an attack based monster, it has the highest attack. Next is the Bee, and then the Bat. So you're luckier if you get the Bat, because the Bat has a lower chance to, um, to kill you basically. So, he has much much lower attack. He also doesn't have any sort of threatening debuff, he has no, um, he doesn't have armor break or shock, he, he has attack down on his first skill. So what I usually do is, since my monsters all have a 100% chance to do something, and they all have a 100% crit, meaning that they all will do the exact same amount of damage every single time that they attack. I've already calculated the exact amount of damage that they will do on every single attack because it won't, it's impossible for them to go any higher or lower because they're all on a 100% crit. Obviously these two have like 1% chance to not crit, but 99% is already reliable enough um, for this purpose. So I crit, put the defense down on him, finish him off. I also crit as well because I have 100% crit on, on him. I have 100% crit on my Light Medusa, so this will 100% stun. And another thing to note is that you see these two side monsters, they never resisted, they didn't resist the armor break nor did they resist the stun. These monsters actually have a base resistance of zero. They have no resistance at, at all on this stage. Now the developers that designed th this floor actually did give this Light Persephone a little bit of resist. Actually no, a little bit is an understatement. She has a lot of resist. So it's not too reliable to try to CC her, although I will still try. Um, I will still try to use my my like dark victoria to to try to stun her now in the case that she is stunned um this is the best case scenario in the bet in the case that she is stunned she won't attack and i basically i save myself for one turn now the second turn i'm going to use my armor break on this um bat and finish him off with my dark Gatito. and then i'm going to use these two since they these two already have all both have a hundred percent chance to stun unless it gets resisted um, it's a much much higher chance than turn one to stun her. So I'm already, I'm already much much safer than I am in turn one. So I try to stun with one of them. If it doesn't land, um, then the other one still has a chance to stun. And I was pretty lucky. I did manage to get the stun. I would usually use them both at the same time in order to get that combo damage. If you don't know how to do comboing, um, it's basically when you attack at the same time. It provides about a five percent damage increase, which is actually very very important in running um, Dragon's B10 because it's all about damage here. So this is the third turn. Third turn is I'm going to try to stun her, or or not stun her. I'm going to try to armor break her, and I'm going to try to if I land the armor break, she is dead this turn. If I don't land the armor break, um, worst worst case scenario is she resists both my stuns, and usually I'm I'm actually really really unlucky in this run because the blue souls went to these two monsters. If the if my Katito just got um, you know even, I think just two blue souls, he would already have a full bar by this turn. And even if the armor break doesn't land, these three monsters attacking with my Gatito's active up at the same time would, would be able to kill her, no matter what. So this is already pretty bad RNG, um, but I was lucky enough to stun her for two turns, so that's actually pretty good. Now, in order for me to survive this turn, I will need to stun her again um, with one of, one of these two monsters. So I'm going to do some combo comboing, use them both at the same time. And then I'm going to finish her off. Now let me take a pause and talk a little bit about why I gened my Thor and my Victoria with one slot defense. Um, you can gen them with one slot defense or one slot HP. It is preferable that you use HP because HP provides higher amount of effective HP than one, one defense gem. Um, although if you only have one defense gem in order to get their crit rate to 100%, you can also use the defense gem. It doesn't really make a difference. The only difference is um, if you use an HP gem and you happen to have some nice HP and defense substats, you might be able to survive when the Light Persephone hits you and also crits. So the reason why I had one defense and HP gem is, since she is light, um, in the case that I don't land any sort of CC on her, she is going to do, use her attack. And she will have three targets to attack. She will choose one of my dark units because she has elemental advantage against dark. Now this is going to be completely random. If she chooses the Dark Gatito, he's not gemmed on any sort of defense or anything like that. He's going to die 100% for sure. So if she doesn't get stunned on one of these turns, hits my Dark Gatito, he's dead. And that's just the end of the story. I'm going to have to refill, do a refill somewhere um, along the lines of just somewhere somewhere through throughout this run, I will have to do one refill um, because my Dark Gatito died. If she attacks one of the Victoria or Thor, then they will survive that that hit because they are gemmed with one slot defense, and I will not have to um, 
I will not have to do another refill, basically. So that's that's kind of why. And I'm going to I'm going to actually um, finish her off here. I think with the three of these monsters combo damaging, um, they should be dead for sure. Now, although all my units have their active skills up, I've already planned, since I have 2 CC and 100% one, armor break and 1 very hard hitting nuker, I will be able to 100% kill something. So, in the case that I don't have any of my bars up, or if I have all my bars up, it doesn't really matter, because in order to be safe, what I, what I usually always do is I armor break um, the Colt. I talked about threat before, Colt is more th most threatening than the bee than the bat. So you want to kill them in this order, you want to make sure that um, whoever you kill first is the cult for two reasons one is because he's most th threatening two is because he is actually the squishiest um, he has the least amount of HP out of all the all three of the units although for my Katito um, he already has enough damage to basically kill any of the three units um, from like if I can armor break or you know it will armor break hundred percent it's already been planned out um, after our armor break my Katito will be able to hundred percent um, kill that monster no matter which monster it is. I've already basically gen my monsters that way So with two stunners left um, and these two these three alive as I explained before you want I want to CC the Colts because the Colts are the most threatening And I will CC them and then this kill about will attack it doesn't matter who he attacks because he doesn't do that much damage And now this turn I armor break again kill this Colt do the same exact thing CC two units. And then I can keep this one stunned for another turn. And um, we'll just send all four to generate as much red soul as possible to heal my Thor up to full. It doesn't really matter if he gets healed at all. It doesn't, doesn't really do anything. Now, that was the second wave. I basically, second wave has, has no real RNG element in it. Um, I will be able to clear it through it 100%. The only way that um, I somehow have to refill on the second run is if the, if my Thor, or um, if all four of the units that are spawned are cults, and I have to leave one cult um, awake, then, um, so if the cult that is awake on the first turn hits my Dark Katito and also crits, then my Dark Katito would die. And that's the only way that, um, that would, I, I would have to refill on the second wave. And the chance of that happening is very, very low, so it doesn't really... It's almost uh, non-existent. Um, but I had, had happen, have had it happen once before. So it's about like, I don't know, maybe once every 100 runs. So it's not too bad. So on the third wave, everyone has a full bar. What I'm going to do is, the dragon actually has a mechanic called, I think it's called Lightning Breath. Um, basically, if when his HP drops below 50%, you'll see Breathe Lightning on all foes. When HP drops below a certain level, deals massive damage and inflicts shock for two turns. Basically, if I, if I hit him under 50%, he's going to use this skill and instantly kill all my team. Like, just the entire team. That's, this thing does so much damage. And there's just really no way for me to um, to really live through that. So what I'm going to do is, um, what I usually do is I try to armor break him on first turn. I always try to do this. If, in the case that he gets resisted, my Dark Victoria also has a 60% chance to armor break. So I will use my Dark Victoria to try to armor break him. If this also doesn't land, I will nuke with my, I will use the active of my um, Light Medusa and use my Dark Atito. Now there's a 1 in 4 chance that this fucks up. Oh shit. Oh my god. I think I'm fucked. Alright, this is a this is a 1 refill run. I um there's really nothing I can do. I'm just gonna have to use my nukes. Get him as low as possible, and he's gonna use lightning breath. This was really unfortunate because um one he resisted the armor break. If he just did not resist the armor break on the first turn, I would have been, been able to kill him on the second turn with my Dark Vitito's nuke. Um but because he resisted it, I had to, and also hit my Thor, I was not able to armor break him. If he hit these two instead on the second turn after he resists the armor break and my Thor was able to armor break him, I would have been able to um, use my Dark Atito and the other unit to, to basically finish him off um, from that amount of health. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to armor break him now. 
and then I'm going to um, basically send these three, and this should be enough damage to finish him off. So that was a one refill run, mainly because um, he resists the armor break. Now the dragon doesn't have a very very high resistance. He only resists maybe once out of every, I guess once out of every seven runs or so. So it's not, it's definitely not too high. Mm, beautiful. All right, so that was. Um, I think that that basically explains the strategy behind my runs. Now, the double CC I think is very very important. At the same time, damage is also important, and um, having a hundred percent crit is also important. So basically, you need you need to have your units either on a certain set um, with a hundred percent crit rate, or they also need to. Well, actually, no. They, that's like one requirement that you absolutely need to need to have, unless they're a monster that has some sort of CC and doesn't require 100% armor break, and is also um, nuclear based or like attack type, basically. So I think the only monster is the only exception is if you have a monster like the um, like an Evil Three Fire Arthur, for example. If you have an Evil Three Fire Arthur, you can actually use him as a nuker. You can literally build him uh, triple attack, and he won't require that 100% armor break. Although, or 100% crit in order to um, do the armor break, and then with triple attack, he will still be able to provide basically um, more damage than, than my Dark Victoria or something, for example. But there are other there are al other alternatives. Um, I think most of the, most of the really good ones require 100% armor break. The other um, Nat Five monsters with 100% armor break don't have that much attack. And don't much don't have that much utility. Like this one has the the water Odin has three thousand one hundred attack, which is pretty good. You can probably use her. Um, just go triple triple attack. Um, I mean, ideally, if you want the highest amount of damage, then you want to have a hundred percent armor break on ruin with like crit rate double attack or something like that, um, in order to make sure she has the highest amount of attack. But then at that point. You don't even need to use her because you're already pushing for 100% armor break, and there are al better alternatives like um, like like Dark Victoria, Light Medusa, or um, Light Tiger. Light Tiger is also a very very nice monster um, that you can use because he also has a 100% CC and he has Hunter on second skill, which makes him do a lot of damage. Now it doesn't matter which type of CC; it can be Sleep, Petrify, Stun, um, Shock. It doesn't matter which type of CC it is, as long as it's 100% it basically will be reliable. Wait, does Light Arthur have... Light Arthur has 100% shock, right? Alright, this this guy's perfect, actually. 3,900, triple attack. You don't even need good gems. But then you just need to pull Light Arthur, which is, like, freaking impossible, so we're not even going to talk about that. Now, another good unit is the Woodyasha. This is probably the most common for everyone. Um, she also has 100% CC and Hunter. It doesn't matter which type of CC. The only time that it matters is if both your CC units have sleep, then it won't work. If one of your units have sleep and the other has stun or shock or petrify, um, then it won't matter. Because sleep will wake the other sleep up. It only matters for the first wave. You know, for the time when you're when you have two stunners trying to attack, two CC monsters trying to attack the light purse at the same time. Um, if you're using a sleep unit, the other guy can actually wake your sleep unit up and doesn't land their CC and then it just basically wakes the light purse up and you're pretty much fucked. So um, the, the way you make it reliable is you can have one stun and have your stunner attack first and then have her attack second and it will still work. So sleep definitely does does pr provide enough CC. It, it still works as well, it doesn't matter which type of CC it is. So she's actually really good because she has 3100 um, base attack which is relatively high. And she also has Hunter on the second skill, which um, can do a lot of damage to the dragon. And she also has a useful leader skill called, um, you know, Death Blow, which is really, really nice because this also provides crit damage, especially if you're building a whole team that has 100% crit. Like, this is going to be more effective than the attack lead because of how, how much more attack it gives. It gives 40 to 45, so it's pretty good. I don't think there's any other monsters that have 100% CC and still is, like, attack type. There might be, but... Um, not really worth considering. There's like the light sea star who also requires 100% crit, but she she actually um, is not attack type, as you can see. She has very very low damage. Although I've been thinking of experimenting experimenting with her because she has also she also has 100% attack down, 
And I was thinking if I could land this on the dragon, then it might actually provide another layer of defense for me, because if the dragon happens to maybe attack my Dark Gatito while he has attack down, um, maybe it won't die or something like that, but I don't, I don't have, um, I can't really test her out. I don't have her with a square slot, so my light sea star is not really usable. But she actually could work as well. She also has the critical hit, so I think she's like the most uh, newbie friendly monster to use because she she can get your team to 100% crit using her leader skill as well as um, provide a stun for you. So I think she actually might work as well, but it, de it really depends on what monsters you have. Um, a lot of the monsters I'm using, like all the monsters I'm using are all event monsters. They're from rebirths or events or... Um, yeah, rebirths and events. All of my monsters, all the, the four monsters I'm using on my team are rebirth and event monsters. So if you miss any of them, um, you're going to have to look for replacements. Now, I want to talk a little bit about not actually using 100% CC and using just nukers to nuke through the stage. Now, um, Dragon Speed 10 is all about all about covering your bases. The more bases that you can cover, like basically the less chance of you know either something attacking you, critting you, um, or killing you. Like you don't. Any time that you have to rely on RNG somehow is just not good. Um, and if you're running a nuker comp, it's basically very, very reliant on RNG because it depends on who the Light Persephone attacks or who, um, if you're... Yeah, basically it depends on who the enemy attacks because you can't use any sort of CC against them. It's actually more reliable to use CC than to than to give them like a 1 in 4 chance or 1 in 3 chance of who, who they can cho whoever they can choose to attack. Um, you're gonna get way more wipes that way than if you try to CC them in the first place. Because my team has like two layers of safety net. Basically, I try to CC the light purse, and if it doesn't land, in the case that it doesn't land, I have a 1 in 3 chance that I get fucked, but it's only 1 in 3. So I, I still have a 66% chance of me not getting fucked. So, um, you know, that's actually pretty good. So I'm going to actually show another team. Um, this team is not going to be reliable. It might even go up to a few, like maybe three refills. Mainly because my other nuker doesn't really have 100% crit. Um, obviously, if I'm Mona had 100% crit, this would be really, really reliable. Um, but, you know, you can definitely do something like, something like this. And then you can bring another armor breaker. There, there are Thor replacements. Um, let me... Let me do a, do ones without Thor first. I'll, I'll just do this. Uh, this is like just straight nukage. And they have very, very low crit rate because they, they don't have any square slots. So I basically had to gem them with triple attack. Um, with as much crit rate subs as I can from... Like, as I possibly can. But they only have about 50% crit rate. So it's not... It's definitely not too reliable. These two should be enough to kill the cult. Oh shit, alright. They're not enough to kill the cult. Okay, now if she hits any one of these guys, I'm pretty much fucked. So I'm basically um, already going to have to refill once on this wave. Mainly because I don't have any sort of CC on her. And I'm basically relying purely on RNG. I have a 1 in 4 chance of getting... Or, or of not get not getting fucked. I have a 70% chance of actually getting getting killed on this stage. So basically, what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm uh, I'm just playing like purely based on RNG. Oh god, if like both of them crit, I think I would have killed her. All right, this might this is probably going to be a three refill run. Oh, nice, I got three bats. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah, and she didn't crit as well. That was, that was really bad. Um, you can do something similar if you have, like, 100% crit. Oh, God. It might be four refills. Yeah, this is going to be a four refill run. Just bad RNG. But depending on how many bases you can cover... Like, this is... What I'm showing you right now is worst case scenario. You don't have any armor break. You only have nukers, but um, but that's all you have. And you, you have like I, this is my mine is not a really good example because my nukers don't have a hundred percent crit. 
if they both if both these monas had a hundred percent crit, I was think I would um, imagine that on the first wave when they they would have crit at least one more time against the Persephone, and I might have been able to um, might have been able to do a little bit more damage rather than just straight out getting killed. Oh my god, alright, this is a 5 refill run, I'm so bad. Alright, this is this is like the worst possible team. Okay, he's gonna do his little breath thing again. See the amount of amount of resources I have to put into making YouTube videos? Spent 40 Astro Gems to make this YouTube video. Alright. So that was like, that was like, what, four or five refills? It was really, really bad. Um, mainly because these two, one, they didn't have 100% crit rate, so their damage was not unreliable. Um, and both of them didn't have it, so that was like, that's already like two points off. And then I don't have Armor Break, that's like another point off. And I don't have any sort of CC, and that's like, like I'm missing like two CC units and that's like another two points off so this is like probably the worst um, still usable the worst still usable usable nuker comp for dragons b10 now I'm gonna add um, I'm gonna add a little bit more into this I'm this time I'm going to add a oh shit a quick restart fuck me all right we'll just do this for science Maybe using... Oh my gosh, he didn't crit. Oh my god, this one didn't crit either. Oh god, they're so fucking... My monas are so bad. Alright, we're doing this for signs. I was thinking, like, maybe if they crit a little bit more, I might have... Yeah, like, seriously though, if this mona crit on the first turn... If she just crit on the first turn... Please don't get shocked. Alright, nice. I can put put a little bit more damage on her. All right, now when when I revive, I should be able to kill her straight out. If they crit, if they don't crit, I'm still pretty fucked. Please crit, please crit, please crit. I don't want to spend astro gems. Okay, nice. Holy shit. I think that four refill was actually just really really unfortunate. But mo in most cases, it shouldn't come to that. It really shouldn't come to four refills. Maybe three is reasonable, I think. Oh, if they, like, always crit, I could probably get this team down to three. But, uh... Alright, just combo with C-Star with this, and then kill the... Kill the B, and then I'll, I'll go with a uh, full nuke with these. Oh my god, this Mona didn't crit again. Please survive. Ooh, how am I going to do enough damage? I'll send these three. All three of them. And they didn't crit. Please. Oh my god. Fuck this shit. Alright, I'm... I'm really... I'm, I'm so tilted. I, I don't know anymore. Oh god. Why did I click quick restart? Please, not the Katito. Oh my god, I need to bring him somehow under 50%. Please, not the Mona, not the Mona, not the Mona. Okay, okay, okay. Crit, 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 crit. Fuck it and crit, no. No. Oh my god, alright, that's two more, that's one more refill. See how bad this is? Oh god. Oh shit! Oh my god, his bar's almost full. If, if after this revive, they don't crit, like both monas don't crit, that's one more refill. Oh my god, the amount of astro gems I'm spending to make YouTube videos is insane. Oh fuck! Wait, wait, wait! My C star didn't get stunned. Please, crit, 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 crit! Kill him! Kill him! Kill him! Yes! <laughs> Oh god, alright, never again, never again. Never never am I doing this again. Dude, I'm I'm gonna spend like 200 Astro making a YouTube video for you guys. 
getting freaking flat attack gem of fortitude, you know? Oh, three Astro Essence to reward me. Okay. I'll take it. Okay, that was, uh, that was actually really fucking bad. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to still use a Nuker. Now, which, which one of you has better gems? Oh, that you guys both have shitty gems. I think this one has slightly better gems. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna use this one. And this time, this time, this time to do something different. I'm gonna bring a 100% Armor Breaker into, into the mix. As well as, uh, my Dark Atito. Now this time I have three Nukers and, uh... I might as well go attack lead, to be honest. I mean, she's 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 not gonna crit anyways. I might as well go attack lead. Damn, my my C star is not re very reliable. I might as well go like this. Yeah, fuck it. We'll just go like this. Okay, I'm not gonna even rely on them critting. I'm just gonna try to make them do as much damage as possible. Now, this is gonna be a lot safer because I know I can always kill this on first turn. And maybe if both of these guys crit, nope, none of them crit. Oh god. This game. Maybe if one of them crit they can kill this bat. Hmm. No, they don't they don't have any crit. Alright, I give up. And she resists it. But this time, this time what's different is um I have a I have an armor breaker this time. So, with my armor breaker, I can guarantee, and my other monster that actually has 100% crit, I can guarantee that I'll always kill something um, in one turn. And also with a nuker, like a, with an AoE nuker, what you can actually do is you can you can basically just uh, you can combo their nukes together, and then on the second wave, if they if she actually does crit on something, then I can kill it. See, she crit on this one and actually died. So that actually was not too bad, but I think. I think I'm still pretty fucked. Please not the Gatito. Alright, I'm gonna have to use the AoE. Actually, wait, no, I don't have to use the AoE. We'll just kill this. And then even the bat- Oh my god! What?! What?! It didn't die- No! No! Oh shit. Oh shit. The amount of astrogems I spend for you guys to make these videos. Now you might be thinking, what the actual fuck are you doing? But um, I'm just trying to show that every th single thing that you add into your your team makes it slightly more reliable. So if these two had crit, then you know I would I would have killed the thing on the side on first turn. Oh, shell supposed to armor break him first. Or it doesn't matter, he's gonna use his freaking AoE and kill me anyways. That's, uh, how many refills did I do? That was one. Yeah, I only did one refill. So this can, this is a two refill run. Just by adding one armor breaker, I, I got my freaking four to five refill run into a two to three refill run. Nice. Love it. Love your, love your armor breaking. Okay, and now it's dead. So basically, um, I cut down the amount of threats by adding some sort of utility. And and the closer you are to actually having the team that I have right now, the more reliable that your team will be. Now, obviously, my team is not perfect, but it, the units are already perfect. the The thing that isn't perfect about ooh, what's this? It's flat, but um, I'll maybe use it to fill a slot, like. You know, maybe if I have like two other siphoning gems and like I'm missing just one square slot siphon gem, I'll just put I'll just put that in and, and fill the slot. It's better than nothing. Okay, so so let's 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 uh let's remove one more threat. Let's put in another um another CC monster this time. So this is with an armor breaker and one CC monster and two nukers. I basically, um, I with my CC monster, I can remove the threat on this side. So 100% armor break, 100% crit nuker, kills him. 100% CC, 
gets rid of this threat. And the only thing that's able to fuck me over is the Light Persephone. Now, if she attacks one of these two, I'm good. Because they're also tanky enough to survive. They're not my nukers, they're my utility providers. And I can kill this. And then I have 100% CC, but she has resist. So I'm just going to try to CC her, and if I'm lucky, it lands. So I have basically one layer of defense on that wave against her. Um, if that stun didn't land and she attacks, she could have killed either... She could have killed my Victoria because, you know, obviously she's not full HP anymore. If she attacks my Gatito, he's also dead because he's gen with full attack. If she attacks my Mona, she's also dead because she's, she's also gen with full attack. And if she attacks my Thor, um, then I'm safe, basically. So since I landed the armor break, um, this combo damage should be enough to just basically finish her off. Now, you might be asking why did I gem... Like, why not gem your nukers with... Uh, with one slot defense as well. Well, the the reason is, if you do actually do that, then you won't be able to... If I was to gen my nukers like that, um, then there is no, like, just 100% no way that I would be able to kill the dragon um, without any refills, because I won't be able to provide enough damage to kill him once he's around 60% health or something like that, or even bring him to 60% health on the first turn without a nuker that's gemmed on full full attack. The only exception is if I was to able if I was able. The reason why I explained why my team wasn't perfect was because of gems. Um, if if I had all the ideal gems, then all four of my units would be on a ruin set. This way, they would have enough damage, and they would still have 100% crit, and. Um, like, they would be, need to be on a ruin set with 100% crit, and um, everyone gemmed with, like, one slot defense. And this way, even if the Light Persephone attacks my Gatito or, or my Mona or something, one of your, my nukers on the first turn, I would still be able to survive that hit. And on the Dragon, um, because all my other monsters are already on ruin, they basically get a 40% extra damage increase. They're still able to kill the Dragon, even at the point where... Um, where he decides to hit my Gatito or something like that, and I lose one of my nukers, or um, yeah, basically, you know, give them enough damage to, to finish off the dragon. So what I'm going to do is um, same thing on this on this wave. Now, if you have two AOE nukers, it actually might be more reliable to use both their nukes at the same time and try to see who you, who you can kill. Because if you're lucky, well, no. If you're if you gen if this Mona was gen properly, she would have 100% crit, and this whole entire wave would be dead. Um, but since she isn't, they're still alive, and she didn't crit on these three, so it was pretty damn bad. But uh, the good thing is, what I can do it now is, since I have a CC unit um, and a damage dealer, what I can do now is I can actually kill one. I can CC or kill the other one, and there's only one threat left. And then I'll send all four to attack to generate as much red soul as possible to try to heal up some of my units. Now on this wave, um, since I don't have, since I don't have, uh, well actually no, it doesn't really matter which unit. Like this team is actually slightly better than using the Medusa because I have two 100% nukers here. So what I can actually do is I can try to armor break him first, and you know, like always, it doesn't land. All right, I can use my other armor break. All right, this time this one lands. I want to use my Mona's nuke to try to bring him low enough. Oh wait, shit! This might put him under fifty percent. Oh shit! No, fuck! I fucked up. I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have used the Mona's nuke. That was my bad. That was so fucking bad. I, I wasn't familiar with this team. I didn't know how much damage the new Mona would, would hit. If I was using my Light Medusa, I wouldn't have done that much damage. But um, And she happened to crit, so it was unreliable. The The reason why like the 100% is also good is because sometimes not like expecting not to crit and then critting can actually hurt you as well. So you want to know exactly how much damage you'll do exactly how many times you'll land the armor break and like you'll know that you'll always land the armor break and you'll always land the CC and that's how basically you make your Dragon's B10 team reliable. Alright if I if I was to move further up I would have to take out this um, Mona and put in my put in my Medusa basically.
Now, this thing has one more extra chance for, for it to screw up because obviously if it does actually, um, if the Light Persephone doesn't get, or the Light Persephone, there's no way that the Light Persephone on the first turn will get stunned. So there's always a chance that the Light Persephone will attack one of your nukers. And um, if your nukers don't have enough damage, then they can actually get killed pretty easily. I just think that it's better that I rely on the CC rather than relying on um, her choosing which unit to attack. But obviously, if you're putting in four dark units, what, what you could also do is... Um, I, I'm not too sure, because certain nukers are actually too squishy. But what you could actually do is you can maybe put, for example, um, if you're using a Dark Mona, put her on like one slot HP, and then try to get like some de defense substats. But at the same time, she also needs to be 100% crit. And then, um, I think I was using this one. Yeah, I was using this one. Um, yeah, she basically needs to have some like defensive substats because obviously her base stats for defense is actually a lot lower than some of the other monsters, like my Victoria for example, and she actually comes pretty close to dying sometimes. So I think even with one slot HP, the Mona won't be able to, like a Dark Mona, um, without any sort of bonus substats, like maybe if you had like 20% defense on one of your substats, but at the same time still push like 100% crit rate, then I guess it could work because um, if you think about it like this, every single time on the first turn, the Light Persephone has a 1 in 4 chance to attack one of your units, and uh, basically, it's like a 75% chance that she doesn't kill you every single time. But then on the se on the second turn, if you don't land the CC, it becomes a like you only have one one unit to CC her, and if that one doesn't land, it becomes a 50/50 chance because one of your units are already damaged. So if she attacks that same unit again, or she attacks your your straight like full nuker, then basically you have to re re um, revive once. It's, it's a wipe, basically. So I was thinking, I was just thinking that it's more reliable to use um, two CC monsters instead, instead of one. But yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. So yeah, I think, I, I think I can really, I can definitely up my, um, make my team a little bit more reliable. I, I think if I had an Evil 3 Wood Yaksha, I would switch out the Dark Victoria and put her in, and then I, I would put my um, Dark Petito on one slot, uh, one slot defense or HP, and then he, he would actually be able to survive one hit from Persephone. And then I would still have two CC monsters, and even if the dragon chooses to hit him in, in the beginning, my Yaksha with um, Hunter on second skill and like built full damage would be able to basically still um, do a lot of damage to the dragon, along with whoever's still alive, like my Medusa and Thor and stuff like that. So, you know, it. It just has to. It's a, a lot of it's just theory. Um, I don't. I don't have the perfect team yet, but hopefully, hopefully this helped you guys out. It's more of a in-depth guide. Um, you know, if you had like two Katitos, you could do the same thing as well. You can put in the same team I did before. Um, you know, Dark Victoria, two Katitos, and then you can gem maybe one Katito. I don't know if it's going to be enough damage. Like, if you had the perfect substats, like if you had had one of them on Ruin or something like that, or if you had both of them on Ruin, it might be possible for you to gem both of them with like one slot HP, and then they would still have enough damage to kill the dragon or bring the dragon to 60% health on the first turn, and then straight out kill the dragon on the second turn. Um, or if they would have enough damage to, you know, maybe Thor armor breaks on the first turn, they both have their active actives up, and then you basically one shot the dragon or something like that. Um, but I don't have two Gatitos to test that out. I, I'm working on my second one right now. In the, in the time of um, recording this video, the Gatito event is actually on, so I'm working on a second one right now. But we're going to have to see if um, it's going to take some testing. But this is just me sharing my sharing some of my findings for Dragon Speed 10, sharing some of my experiences. And hopefully this helps you, helps you guys a little bit in and you building up your Dragon's B10 team. And I lost so many, so many Astro Gems making this video, but you fuckers better be thankful. God damn it, I lost so many Astro Gems. Um, but anyways, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna end this video here. And if you have any questions, um, you can definitely leave it in the comments below. You can also hop on my Discord. Um, I have a Discord channel. I'm always active on Discord. You can ask me questions. And as, lo as long as I'm not sleeping or or uh, in the gym or some or at the gym or something like that. I'll I'll basically always instantly reply 
Um, so that, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.